I asked our team of professional designers here at Thrive Themes to come up with some of the best buttons that would get people to take action. Most of these can easily be designed by applying some of our pre-made button templates available inside the Thrive Architect, but nevertheless, let's build a few of these entirely from scratch. Now, first things first, you need to install Thrive Architect on your WordPress website if you haven't done so already, and then simply follow along as I replicate these wonderful call to actions using the magic of no code. Excellent, so I want you to take a look at what I've got going on here. I have a landing page opened up with Thrive Architect. And by the way, this page template comes, um, you can locate it inside a set called Chick Smart for those of you guys that got um, Thrive Architect installed on your WordPress website. And I've added in three different types of buttons inside a three column layout. And what I want us to do here real quick is to just try to replicate these buttons from scratch. Excellent. So let's insert a three column layout right underneath our current columns. And let's do a three column layout. Perfect. Now, since I'm trying to build these buttons from scratch, what I'm going to do is insert a button. And as you can see, what's happening here is Thrive Architect is automatically giving me my predefined font style uh, that I've uh, applied to my theme uh, by powering through the Thrive Theme Builder Wizard. And it has also given this button a background color by making use of my theme primary color. Great, so we're trying to copycat this orange button here, right? Now, this, actually, this button is actually a little bit tricky because we have a you know an orange background color followed by this light inner shadow and then again if you take a closer look we have this orange border radius as well but first things first let's actually take a look at what font we're using here let me get over to the typography and we're making use of rubik with a 16 pixel font size and one pixel of letter spacing so let's actually uh let's go ahead and inherit those those um font properties google fonts let's do rubik Excellent, and let's do 16 pixels and one pixel of letter spacing. Now, I also know that by taking a closer look at this orange button right above, that it's set to, to stretch out to the full width of the column of the parent container, right? So if we come here and make sure that we don't center align the button, but instead make sure that we have it stretch out to the full width of the parent container, which in this case is a column, you can see how it stretches out to the full width of that column. Now, by calling here to layout and position, I'm just gonna make sure that we have these um, paddings and margins be the same. I can see that they're not, so let's make sure that we have 22 pixels of internal padding all around. And th there is something actually that's throwing me off, which is the fact that we're not making use of the same copy. So let's actually do, do this. Let's type in get your free ebook. Now I can clearly see that these are still not exactly the same. So I have a feeling that this is just a, uh, yeah, this is bolded, our system, so let's make sure we bolt this. And we can now grab this orange background color. I can just use this. This is FF6C3B. And let's make sure we set that background color to this button that we're building from scratch. Great. All right, this is starting to look a whole lot closer. Now, the first thing that I would do is probably take care of the porter radius, right? So this button is making use of one pixel of orange border radius all around. So let's do that. Let's do, let's grab our orange background color. Perfect, give it one pixel of border radius all around. Great, now you can't actually tell that that orange border radius is there because we still haven't given it, it the, you know, that white inner shadow, but this is going to, this is going to start showing up in a second. And we need our border radius to be 100 pixels all around. So let's do that. Excellent, so this is already starting to look a whole lot more like the button that we have above. Now we just need to make sure that the, the background color is actually still not quite exactly the same. These are different tones of orange. Let me see if I mistakenly grabbed the wrong tone. Yeah. All right, that looks a whole lot more like it. Great, so we have our border radius, we have the border color set. Now we just need to take care of that inner shadow that is white all around. Great, so let's just grab the properties from this button and apply it to this one. 
So we're going to have 360, 100, 0, 0, 3. And we need this to be white. And voila, that would be our first button. Let's jump over to button number two. Again, we're going to look for a button. We're going to drag here. And just for the sake of showing you which types of buttons we have available in Save Tribe Architect right off the bat without having to create them from scratch, we just run through them. We've got this uh, fancy decoration um, button with that kind of shadow behind it. Buttons with borders, rounded buttons. This button actually looks a whole lot more like this one. In fact, in order to save ourselves some time, instead of building this one from scratch, let's go ahead and enable this template. And that has already pretty much taken care of the borders for us. So now we just need to customize the background color. Let's make sure we may set this to be get your free ebook. Let's change the background style. Now, in order to get this arrow on the left-hand side, we're going to have to come over here to our main button settings, and let's give it a uh, an icon, a left-hand icon. We need to find our icon, which is going to be a right arrow. I think it's going to be this one. Excellent. And we need to give this icon a background color, which is going to be, in this case, white. And let's make that icon black. And we clearly need to make sure that this is 14 pixels. Are we using the, oh, we're not using the, the right icon. We need the outline one. We need arrow right. And I think it's going to be, it's probably going to be this one. Let's give that a shot. This one is 14 pixels and this one is 14 pixels. And we need to give this 18 pixels of padding, perfect. 18, 18, and 18. All right, and let's make sure that this button doesn't make use of any excessive borders here. All right, so we need this to be six, uh, six pixels of internal padding all around with the exception of the right-hand side, which is going to be 25. Perfect. And here, again, we're making use of Rubik, 14. Set this to be 14. One pixel of line spacing. Let's make sure that the typography is set to Rubik. Let's build this 14. And let's give it letter spacing of 1. And we just need to make this black. Okay, we are getting closer. I can't seem to figure out which icon they're using. It's arrow right. Okay, I think I'm going to use this one. Or that. This one's actually shorter. It should be this one. Arrow right outlined. Yeah, that's the one. Perfect. Now, this is going to have a border radius of 100 pixels all around. With the exception, of course, of this bottom left um, corner, which is going to have a border radius of zero, if I'm not mistaken, right? Yeah, that's the one. And boom, there goes button number two. Great, so I like the idea of not having to start from scratch, right? I mean, I showed you how you can, technically speaking, start from a completely blank uh, template, which is, you know, just dragging a button element on your, on your canvas and trying to replicate each little um, decoration element from, from from scratch without actually making use of a template. But why do that when we can start off from a template and save ourselves a little bit of time, right? All right, so for this last button, we are looking for a button that makes use of a little bit of rounded borders. I would say that's probably like 10 pixels, 5 to 10 pixels. And we need a left icon one more time. All right, so let's see if we can find something like that. I probably want to make use of... Hey, this one looks pretty much the same as the one that we're going after, right? We just need to get rid of that um, inner border here. And that's about it. So let's do that. Um, let's change the icon right from the, from the very beginning. Uh, let's do this file 
think we're making use of this one, if I'm not mistaken. Well, it's kind of similar, right? We just need to get rid of this internal padding here. Let's give it zero, and we don't need the border. None. Great. This icon is actually making use of 15 pixels underneath and no paddings all around. So let's get rid of all these paddings and give it a bottom 15 pixel margin. Perfect. And again, let's change our font style to be Rubik. Great. I don't need this to be bold here. What I do want to do is left align my text. Great. Let's change this to be get your free ebook, get instant access. Great. So it's going to be 18 pixels, which is fine. And we need to bold our typography. But we don't want to bold this. Great. So we've bolded the top text and we don't need so much letter spacing, right? Just one pixel should do it. Let's change the background color. Background style. Let's make this blue. And we have a little bit of a... Huh, so take a look at this. They're actually using... What what our designers did is they, they're using two background colors, which is giving it this kind of gradient effect more or less so let's do that let's add in another background color that makes use of royal blue which is this one here great so let's add in another background color just going to make use of royal blue great and i like the i like the hover effect on this button actually it slides and pretty cool we should probably change the, the background color though on the hover. Great. And we just need to make sure that the paddings on this button match the paddings on our recently created button. So this is 16 pixels top and bottom and 18 pixels left and right. So 16, 18, 16, and 18. Excellent. And now on hover, instead of changing the background color to this um, default brown, Let's make it blue, but tone down the opacity just a tad bit. All right, let's see what that looks like. Much better. Now, remember, the best call to action buttons make a big difference to your bottom line. They mean more contact details, more leads, and ultimately more sales. All from a little button. So if you need great buttons, you need a great page builder and there are none better than Thrive Architect. So yeah, just be sure to save this video as a reference if you ever wish to further customize the button templates that we provide you with inside Thrive Architect. And if you've got any questions, I am down below in the comment section. And that's it for this video. While you're here, why don't you check out this other video on our channel? You can click right here. And remember, Thrive Suite is the best bang for your buck, so be sure to check it out at thrivethemes.com. The link is in the description box down below.